I was the kind of person I could not even make the flight. You know, it's interesting because I get that initial zap when there's turbulence, that one second zap or whatever. But now it just, it kind of goes, it goes like boop, but then it stops. Whereas it used to be the whole flight, like I'd get zapped and then it would be, you know, anxiety, 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 then get, there'd be more turbulence, zap again, you know, the whole entire flight. I use the space voice touch now for a lot of stuff during the day. Like when I get anxious about something or I'm about to do something that's making me anxious, I just use that face voice touch. I have three friends that give me that incredible like acceptance. Um, so I just like, when I'm start to get anxious about something, I have like their, their face, face, voice touch, just, and, and it just, it's amazing how then I feel better. Like after just a couple seconds, you know, when you start to get anxious about something, picture those three friends, just like walking in the room. It, it just, it's, it's amazing how it works. I think maybe one client out of four says I really don't have anybody like that. Well, these are not my closest friends. That's what's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the other thing. You got to kind of say, no, it doesn't have to be somebody dramatic. It's just to be somebody, you know, who happens to be easygoing. One time I went to the eye doctor and this nurse that was taking my, you know, pressure and stuff was so sweet and supportive. Like for a while I used her, she wasn't even like a friend. Cause you know, I think the closer you are to friends or family or like spouses, you know, they're not always so accepting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, they're, they're not so calming sometimes. I mean, um, so to me, these, these three women, I call them team Jane, they're my calming team. They're not my closest friends. They're just women that I know that happen to have that kind of effect on me that when I'm around them, I just feel very like, you know, they don't, they don't judge me. They don't criticize me. Um, they don't make me feel like there's something wrong with me. It is definitely a different approach mm -hmm. than your standard, you know, fear of flying where you, they put you in front of simulation films where, you know, the planes crashing and you, which never worked for me. It was so terrifying. I mean, I tried every, yeah. every kind of course. What I love about this approach is it just gets to the root of how you've developed this damn fear to begin with. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, where did it, how did it happen that I'm like this and someone else isn't? Apparently about 40% of us don't get this built in. And that leaves us with the need to control everything that could upset us or be able to escape any situation where we don't feel comfortable. So flying is one of those situations we don't control and can't escape. Now we can build it in. We can find a person who you have uh, in your life that you find is comfortable to be with. Even as it may not, be, it may not be a special person, just a friend or an acquaintance. But that person just has the right vibes. They that person's face and voice quality and and touch will activate your calming system. So we take that person and build it into the situations where you need calming. How long did it take you, Jane? Come come to um, probably just like a, a week or two. Yeah, not mm -hmm. it wasn't it it wasn't um, what I'd call like intense amount of time. <clears throat> The, I think the hardest thing is, you know, finding that person or I had to go through a few to um, a bunch, actually. One, of, interestingly, one of the people that I used when I was doing the strengthening exercise in the beginning of the uh, non-judgmental person, it turns out I've gotten to know that person better and they're really judgmental. <laughs> I can't believe I used her. <laughs> So, um, cause at the time I, I didn't know her as well, but the other thing I find is that many of us have in common is that we're imaginative people because this chapter in the book, making your own movie, like where for me, like imagining things that are going to happen, 
that aren't really happening. Like I am a very imaginative person. And, and I think a lot of people on this group, we do tend to be imaginative. Imagination is great to have, but it's nice to know whether you're in it or not. And when you get stressed, you lose track of whether you're imagining something or perceiving it. You can believe that something you're imagining is really happening. Right, right. You can believe it really, really strongly. Like I have myself convinced that turbulence means, you know, oh, well, we're going down. <laughs> That's what uh -huh. turbulence signals to me. When you feel the stress hormones hit, you get revved up. It mm -hmm. makes you feel like you're in danger. Those are the same feelings you have if you were in real danger. Right. right. So it kind of makes you think you must be in danger and you keep getting more bumps, more stress hormones, more stressed up. And so, yeah, it's got to it's got to be danger. How can how can I be having these feelings if it weren't dangerous? And then you imagine what that danger might be that the plane is going to fall out of the sky, and that produces even more stress hormones. So imagination is good if we don't let it take over. And the, the way we have to keep it from taking yeah. over is to be able to calm ourselves well enough that the stress hormones don't make us believe we're in trouble when we're not.